We're accustomed to the United States leading the way in the development of advanced military aircraft. But recently, more and more news has emerged that the Air Force has decided to suspend the development of one of its most promising fighter aircraft, the NGAD. Will anyone be able to take the lead in this technological race? Let's try and figure that out in today's video. The development of the American 6th generation fighter as part of the Next Generation Air Dominance NGAD, program has raised enormous expectations among both military and aviation experts. After all, the device was supposed to not only consolidate U.S. dominance in the air for decades to come, but also set a new standard for military aviation. As was previously the case with the F-22 Raptor and F-35 Lightning II, whose 1,000th fuselage recently rolled off the production line. At a certain point, it started to seem as if they wanted to integrate literally all the latest technologies available into a single aircraft, including remote piloting, swarming assist drones, artificial intelligence, and the most sophisticated sensors. Perhaps it was this desire, along with regularly rising defense costs, that forced the leadership of the U.S. Air Force to take a short break to reconsider the strategy for creating a future fighter. This was officially announced by U.S. Air Force Secretary Frank Kendall during a speech at the annual Life Cycle Industry Days event in Dayton, Ohio in July of this year. Kendall said that despite the U.S. Air Force's emphasis on improving unmanned technology, the main variant of the NGAT aircraft will still be manned. And he also emphasized that work on the Collaborative Combat Aircraft CCA, drone program, serving as a loyal wingman for sixth-generation fighters, will continue without changes. Experts' confidence in the CCA statement was only strengthened after the U.S. Air Force signed contracts with five companies at the end of July to develop software for autonomous flight control of the first batch of these drones. Of course, the exact period of the pause was not announced. According to Kendall, the service will need at least several months to evaluate the next steps in developing NGAD and its cost to the American taxpayer. Meanwhile, the work of Great Britain, Italy, and Japan to create a sixth-generation fighter is only gaining momentum. But before we talk about what the countries presented at Hall 5 of this year's Farnborough Air Show, let's take a closer look at the Global Combat Air Program GCAP. The history of this promising aircraft began shortly before the start of the GCAP program during the same Farnborough Air Show, but by 2018, the former British Minister of Defense Gavin Williamson had shown the public a model of the sixth-generation fighter, the Tempest. It was a jet fighter with deep AI integrations. The ability to fly unmanned, the use of swarming drones, virtual cockpit right in the pilot's helmet, equipped with directed energy weapons and hypersonic ammunition. It's funny to realize how absurd the British minister's statement about directed energy weapons might have seemed to visitors to the air show in 2018, Given how realistic the use of combat lasers and hypersonic missiles from fighter jets seems today, the development team for the future fighter called Team Tempest included project manager and system integrator BAE Systems, responsible for Rolls-Royce engines, working on avionics and sensors Leonardo Spa as well as MBDA, which was tasked with developing weapons. Some of the technologies being prepared for the sixth-generation fighter were planned to be introduced into the current fleet of European Eurofighter Typhoons, which were to be replaced by the Tempest. This is not the first time Britain's attempted to develop its own advanced fighter jet. In the 1990s, the Royal Air Force launched the Future Offensive Air System program, which resulted in the BAE Systems replica aircraft concept. But by 2005, they decided to curtail the program, subsequently purchasing fresh F-35s from the United States. In many ways, the Tempest was a response to the Franco-German Future Combat Air System FCAS, stealth fighter development, this being a response to French and German concerns that Brexit would upend previous plans for a new European fighter program. In 2019, Italy announced it had joined the development of Tempest at Defense and Security Equipment International. DSEI, although for many it was only a matter of time given that the Italian Leonardo was responsible for the avionics of the future British fighter. It also helped British firm 2XL test much of the Tempest technology on a modified Boeing 757-200 test aircraft nicknamed Excalibur. In December of 2021, it became known that Great Britain and Japan would jointly develop a test bench for a fighter engine 
And in February 2022, the countries also agreed to cooperate to develop a next-generation fighter radar demonstrator, Japan and Great Britain Universal Advanced RF Sensor, Jaguar. The development engines were the British division of Leonardo UK and the Japanese Mitsubishi Electric. In parallel, Japan continued to work on its own sixth-generation fighter, the Mitsubishi FX, also known as the F-3, until 2022. However, after assessing the risks and benefits of international partnership, the Land of the Rising Sun decided to join the Tempest Project in December 2022. This, in turn, meant not only the completion of the Japanese FX project, but also the start of the International Global Combat Air Program. At the same time, the partner countries were faced with the task of determining the parameters of the aircraft, the so-called core platform concept, establishing how and where it would actually be built, as well as evenly distributing the cost of the project. It's likely that much of the development and initial production will take place in Lancashire, UK, where BAE Systems has pre-built its own factory of the future with advanced 3D printing and autonomous robotics capabilities. But this doesn't mean that Leonardo, which builds the Eurofighter Typhoon fighters and Mitsubishi Heavy Industries, which is responsible for the lion's share of military production in Japan, will remain out of business. They're likely also actively using their own production lines. Now let's flash forward again to Farnborough Air Show 2024, where the updated GCAP fighter design was revealed to us at the end of July. The original concept was a twin-engine stealth aircraft with a unique modified cranked delta wing configuration. The updated design in the form of the first fighter model in a one-to-one -one scale demonstrated not only the redesigned shape of the wings to true delta, but also their significant increase in size, which in turn directly announced a shift in emphasis on the operating range of the future fighter, as well as increasing fuel reserves and payload volume. In general, the trend in recent decades towards stealth fighters has forced companies to develop new aircraft, taking into account the impressive space for ammunition inside. After all, the main task of military aircraft engineers today is to get rid of any elements in the lower part of the device, cover everything with the best radio-absorbing materials available, and cram as many weapons as possible into the internal compartments. Early GCAP concepts were based on a general stealth configuration, but the original Lambda wing gave way to a Delta wing with a swept trailing edge. On the new model, the trailing edge is almost completely straight, like the classic Delta wing, and the wingtips have two cut edges reminiscent of the F-16U. The Pelican nose profile of the earlier GCAP was replaced by a traditional stealth fuselage and forward-facing engine intakes, more reminiscent of the F-22 Raptor than the F-16 Fighting Falcon. The tail surfaces of the first Tempest concepts extended slightly beyond the trailing edge of the wing and appeared to comprise rudder vaders similar to Northrop Grumman's never-produced YF-23 prototype. The current vision has traditional vertical stabilizers and, due to the enlarged wings, their trailing edge now extends beyond the rear of the tail surfaces. Although in the end, both designs of the tail and the future fighter are perceived rather as a kind of compromise in the matter of stealth of the device, given how much more popular the decision to completely abandon vertical tails has become with each decade. But the engines and their exhaust will be well hidden by the rear of the fuselage. Engineers made the right decision by removing the protruding sting between the engine nodules in the original 2022 version of the GCAP. It's a pity that nothing's known about the engines themselves, except for the fact that these will be more powerful and completely engine types. The GCAP demonstrator will have a pair of already familiar Eurojet EJ200 turbofans used in the Eurofighter Typhoon. The final prototype, as conceived by the countries in charge, should offer a good balance between air-to-air -air missions and attacks on enemy targets on the surface. This also explains the decision to partially sacrifice the fighter's maneuverability for the sake of an increased payload. Speaking of weapons, it's worth noting that each country will almost certainly seek to equip GCAP fleets with domestic ammunition, namely MBDA Meteor from Italy, Spear 3 from Great Britain, and anti-ship ASM-3, as well as JNAM-class missiles from Japan. Additional support for missiles could come from Airbus's Wingman Unmanned Adjunct WA drones, which company representatives pitched to the GCAP development countries during the Farnborough Air Show this year, aiming for commissioning by the early 2030s. 
They intend to roll out the fighter itself no earlier than 2035, so it's not yet possible to talk about its approximate price, unlike the same NGAD whose cost will exceed several hundred million dollars. You think GCAP will be able to eclipse the success of the future NGAD, enticing even more countries to purchase the international aircraft? Or will it remain in the shadow of the US Air Force's newest stealth fighter? Share your guesses in the comments below. And if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell for more content like today's. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.